Welcome to Shep Rambles, where I am Shep, and I tend to ramble about what? Anything and everything. And today we're going to go ahead and ramble on about a online MMORPG, for those of you who are wondering what in the world that stands for, Massive Multiplayer Online Role-Playing Game, Star Trek Online. Um... I've been playing this for years, um, although I take breaks uh, here and there, I never really get tired of it. It's, it's a lot of fun. It continues the story of the prime timeline of Star Trek uh, from after uh, the last Next Generation movie being Star Trek Nemesis, um, practically like one year after that. and there are just tons of stories that uh, mix and intertwine between the classic series and Next Gen and Deep Space Nine and Voyager, Enterprise. Um, and they even cross over into the Kelvin timeline of the uh, reboot Star Trek <clears throat> and the um, alternate timeline. And although they haven't touched upon um, any stories of Star Trek Discovery yet, um, they have brought in the uniforms of Star Trek Discovery, as well as a couple of the, the ships. There's the, the Crossfield, I think it's the Crossfield class, that's the, uh, that's the ship that the USS Discovery is based on, the science ship that has the spore drive. And then there is, and I forget the name of the class of the ship, but it's the Shenzhou so both of those are actually in the game and you can uh, fly those but um, so what is it about about star trek online that i like i mean it's a free to play game now i know there's a lot of free to play games out there where you can only go so far and you got to spend money etc 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 well star trek online is not like that yes of course Yes, naturally, there are things that you can buy in the game, uh, like certain types of ships. Um, there are things uh, in lockboxes, so that way uh, you can buy keys to unlock those lockboxes to get a chance at certain types of ships. But there's also ships that you can buy from their, from their store, um, but you don't have to. You can play this game and all the stories with what you can get um, within the game itself. Um, the type of ships go all the way up to tier six. You start with a tier one ship, um, and you, as you gain and level and rank, the highest you can go up to is a tier six, and you can even get one of those for no cost. Not only that, but they also have a summer and a winter event where you can uh, you, you, you do some um, repeated uh, event types every day. And once you collect so much of these tickets or whatever, you turn them in and you can get yourself a tier six ship of whatever they're featuring. Um, and uh, let's see, there was another one just recently for the uh, anniversary of Star Trek Online, and it happened to be a Bajoran Interceptor that was a Tier 6 ship. So, completely free. Uh, all I had to do was just work for it, um, as far as doing the quest every day, and I got myself a sweet uh, Bajoran Interceptor that is... packs a nice little punch, and it's uh, very maneuverable. But, um... You can still, I mean, you don't have to spend a dime on this game if you don't want to. There's still ways to make money in this game without having to use real money. Um, for example, you can go and mine dilithium. Um, it takes a bit, because you can only mine uh, 
you can only ref you have to mine dilithium and then you have to refine it and you can only refine a certain amount a day but if you continue to refine that you can exchange that there's an exchange rate and it fluctuates um, kind of like a currency rate but it will uh, you can exchange that dilithium for in-store credit and with that in-store credit you can use that to buy extra character slots or extra ship slots um, costumes ships you know whatever um, and it's real easy to level up characters in this game so um, you can ha I've got like seven characters that are completely maxed out and with those seven characters I can put work in them and by the end of the week I can make close to 15 bucks worth of in-store credit a week by the end of the month I've got myself sixty dollars now I have spent actual money um, on the game and I don't have a problem with that I mean the game has got to make money in order for it to keep going I mean they're not just they're not just gonna do this for free out of the goodness of their heart I mean come on it's a business um, so I have spent some money on there and there's a lot of things you could be spending money on uh, that is pretty much thrown away whether you know going out for a party or you know drinking or whatever you know it's it basically you're burning your money up but with Star Trek online I feel it as it was a, an investment um, I bought myself ships um, I waited for a sale when the lifetime membership uh, dropped um, a hundred dollars off than what it normally is so it's normally three hundred dollars and it dropped to two hundred seems like it still seems like a lot of money but I have I have pretty much already made that money back already that 200 because with that lifetime membership you get five dollars of in-store credit every month so with when I bought that the money that I'm making back from that and the fact that I can mine extra or uh, refine extra dilithium uh, every couple of days it's it's paid itself back so um, I really I haven't had a pro I haven't had a problem this game's been going on for years years at least eight years now um, it, it's showing no signs of slowing down they're always putting out new content and this is you know if you're looking for a true continuation of Star Trek not Star Trek Discovery and not the reboot movies but you know this the actual prime timeline of Kirk and Picard and Janeway this is this is what you want to get into the stories are just fantastic and they've brought in um, veteran uh, actors who to reprise their parts, um, uh, like Julian Bashir and Quark and Odo and um, Tuvok, Neelix. Um, they brought in S Scotty's son to play Scotty's part. Um, I, I, I could go on. I mean, it's just, it's, they've done such a great job with this game and the stories are just, they're just intriguing. They're, they're really fun. And it's not only that, but there, there's group missions that you can go into. You don't, even though this is an online game, you don't have to play with others. If you don't want to, you can, you can completely play this as a single player game. Uh, but there are group things that you can go in and play. There's so many different things that you can do with this game. So much variety. And there's even player versus player. So for those of you who are saying, oh, that's just a pay-to-win game, no. Unless you're playing the player versus player. Then you're probably looking at a play uh, pay versus or 
pay to win type of game because you're gonna um, you're gonna want the best ship and the best equipment and usually that stuff is is gonna be uh, uh, in the store that you're gonna need to buy not always you you can still get ships and even tier six ships that are in lock boxes on the exchange. This is different from the store. This exchange uses energy credits. And so things that you get in game, you can put them up on the exchange. Think of it as a market. Uh, so that's another way that you can uh, build up a type of uh, credits to get other things in the game. So there's so there's so many options in this game to be able to uh, play and have fun. It's not limited, really, by any means. Whatever limits are in there are very reasonable uh, from a business perspective. It's it's compared to other games that are out there. This is by far uh, one of the best when it comes to a free free to play game. I mean, there, you, there, you've got a lot more freedom with this game than you do with other ones. This this one is, is uh, very liberal on what it allows you to do, as opposed to um, a lot of the other games out there that are very, very restrictive. But, with all that said, how about we go ahead and jump into the game a little bit. I'll show you around and we'll have a little bit of fun. All right. Here we are, we are in game in Star Trek Online. This is one of my characters here. Uh, Admiral, he's a Fleet Admiral, right? Yeah, Fleet Admiral Smirk with the USS Bradford. Now, I wasn't getting very creative with the ship name on that. He is a temporal agent. He's actually from the 23rd century. Um, thus his uniform, although I don't know why it's showing this, because uh, that's not the current uniform he's wearing. These are the 24th? 25th? Yeah, 24th. I think we're in the 24th century, or either that or the 25th. I can't remember. Uh, those are the current Starfleet uniforms. And, uh, I have myself a Black Panther back here. I'm gonna say hi, Talia. <laughs> You're on camera. The whole world is saying hi. <laughs> just glancing this way. Or are you just watching me play? Whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, kind of dig in here so you can see what this is about. This is the uh, wormhole to the uh, Gamma Quadrant. They just released a Deep Space Nine expansion that re that opens up the Gamma Quadrant and brings in some of the original cast of DS9 for some of the stories. Pretty awesome stuff. I also like the theme song. Okay, no, we're not going to go to the Alpha Quadrant. See, we're on the border of the Alpha and Beta Quadrants. Technically, um, according to Star Trek Tech Manuals, the Earth is like sitting right on the edge of the Alpha and Beta Quadrants. So this is the Beta Quadrant here. Um, ooh. We got some Borg we can go fight. Here, let's go. Let's go fight them. So uh, Vulcan and Doria. Tell Tell Tellar. Where's Where's the Tellarite planet? It's around here somewhere. They're all live all over in this system here. The Orions. So that's the Beta Quadrant. You often hear Alpha Quadrant a lot. Uh, like in DS9 and also Voyager, but Federation is right on the border of the Alpha and Beta Quadrants. So there are different things that you can do in this game. You can do single player, you can do groups, 
you can just do kind of like these encounters where you may start off by yourself and others may join in. So you're not really grouped up, but you're just all just kind of participating together. And that's exactly what this one here is. So let's go in here and let's go fight off some Borg. And the reason why I have this screen here that shows is because it's, uh, again, this is my 23rd century character. So I get this type of template and sound effects and stuff with this character. Even though it's not the ship that I'm flying. Alright. Let's get dangerous. Although I do have a 23rd century phaser on my on my ship. kind of a slight hazard emitter that kind of got rid of the plasma. Oh, there we go. We have another player right there. The ISS Hyperion. Oh, he's from the Mirror Universe. Okay. Kind of making short work of the board. Pick up some loot. They seriously need to rework the board. So we're in this area until this here fills up. So we're this 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 far so far. This is a tactical escort that I happen to be flying. It's a ship that uh, the USS Defiant is kind of based off of. And it's loaded with cannons. And that was a cube. Where are you at? There you are. Yeah, they, the boar could use a rework. They are definitely a little too easy to fight. At least when you have a uh, ship with uh, like high-end tech on it, like what I have. Now, some of my other ships wouldn't do so well against the boar. Got a lockbox. Now this is a free-to-play game, probably one of the best free-to-play games that is out there because of what you can do and what you get for it. And actually, they make their money because they have a store, which you see right here. Take that down. <laughs> Don't need to be buying anything from the store when there's board. Not, not like they're much of a threat, but... So... There is a store that you can buy uh, ships, extra character slots.
keys for those lock boxes. And we'll just kind of pick up some some of the extra stuff around here and looks like he took off. So this is our reward. Now a lot of that extra stuff that you saw is used for uh, crafting. Okay, so you've got these and you can play those solo, people can join in. Um, it's just kind of like a free-for-all type of thing, so you don't get a whole lot of rewards out of it, but, you know, they're just kind of fun little encounters. That's why they're called encounters. But then you've got your actual group uh, queues, where up to five or maybe even more can play. So, like here is the Crystalline Entity, um, known from Star Trek The Next Generation. These are always uh, good to play. You can get yourself Dilithium. And the Dilithium, which is here, this is what we earned was 240, but in order to use it, you have to refine it. And you can, as you can see, there's a limit right below it there. You can only refine so much a day. But with that, there's a store that you can um, buy stuff. All kinds of different types of things you can buy with dilithium. Now, dilithium is not real money. Um, you can mine dilithium. Um, you also get dilithium for rewards. But you can build up dilithium, and then you can exchange it for what's called Zen, which is in-store credit. And that is what you can use to buy stuff like ships and keys, um, uh, duty officers. This is a, like a whole nother thing that you can do in the game. Uh, different types of items, uh, tons and tons of costumes. A lot of this stuff I already have. But yeah, so so yeah, you can use money to, to buy this, but you can also make it within within the game, too. So you don't have to spend a dime on this game at all if you don't want to. The particular ship that I have, the Tactical Escort, um, is a ship uh, that was paid for. Uh, I don't remember if it was real money or if it was uh, from what I built up. Uh, with uh, Zen and Dilithium. Hmm. Thought I'd be in the uh, thing by now. Making some of my glow stuff go away. Alright, so this is a bunch of stuff that I was selling on the exchange. I got a couple of messages here of stuff that sold. I'll delete those. All the rest of the stuff, it stays up in the exchange for so long, and then it's taken off and given back to you, and then you just have to go put it back up in the exchange. And the exchange is a market, so it's different. Yep. Okay, the queue's loading up. So it's different than the dilithium market, and I'll show you that. And that's another. That's another way that you can build up stuff in game. And you can buy stuff that's on the uh, on the market that other players are selling. All right, let's get it. And I do have a cloaking device. Of course, it's a tactical escort. Of course, it's got one. We'll use a time displacement on it. That is that shiny white thing that you just seen there. Anti-time entanglement singularity, that's what I put on it. Oh my, let me 
getting hit by something. That was a shock wave. So there are some messages here off to the side. Oh no. I technically blew up, but I have ability that allows me to go back in time. So that's what happened there. Kick this thing out. And I've got some defensive. These are all science uh, abilities, and these are all tactical. And these are engineering. And so you can customize your ship and your bridge officers. Wow. I was at 100%. That thing blew me apart. And I have impulse damage, too. That's not right. That blew everyone apart. My goodness. That must be one... They must have upped the difficulty on this thing. We've got a reinforcement squadron. Oh, no. Well, that didn't go anywhere. Now i got to sit here for 15 seconds until I respawn. Man, what's going up with this? Usually, this is one of the most... Quicker, uh, group ones that you can get into. I don't know what's going on here. Let's cloak. We get a little closer here. Set our weapons up. Launch some quantum torpedoes off. Wow, okay. Man, I am just getting blown apart. I usually don't have this this kind of problem. Take it out. About time. And I got third place. Oh, crud. Let's get out of here. Alright, good. So now I can choose my reward. I can choose uh, Fleet Marks. Uh, which you usually you use with your um, fleet, like with your star base and stuff. Think of it as a guild. Um, and I created my own. Or you can use uh, what's called different size of reputation marks, which is what this is. And you can exchange that for dilithium. And then with that dilithium, you can sit there and... Uh, exchange it for store credit or, you know, what have you. So, we'll take a look here. So, see, I've, I've made another 720 dilithium. I can refine that. And I still have, like, another 7,000 that I can refine today. And there are some that you get a lot more than that. But... That gives you kind of an idea. These are the reputation marks that I was telling you about. So, like every... I can exchange these for dilithium. So, really 500 of them. And I'll show you. So, 
So right here, if I turn in 500 of those, I'll get 2,000. You can bear, I don't know if you can see that, but it says 2,000 dilithium ore. Um, plus, you can do mining once a day. That gives you about 1,000. Let's head back to... Uh, um, what's it? Earth Headquarters, whatever it is. Starbase Headquarters. So, okay, so you've got uh, those encounters I told you about. You've got these group queues, all kinds of different group group, group queues that you can uh, join in. The, and these, uh, they're all separated by the type of reputation marks that you can uh, earn. And those reputation marks are used to get um, different types of uh, equipment and gear. That's all high-end uh, game stuff. But for those starting out, there's the, there's the story. And I haven't done a lot with the story on this character. But there's, there's this whole Klingon War story. This is pretty much where the game starts off. You can see there's a lot of story to go through there. And it just kind of goes down from there. You've got the uh, planet Nimbus 3 from uh, Star Trek V. So there's some stories that go on there. There's some stuff that goes on with the Romulans and Empress uh, Sela, who is uh, voiced by Denise Crosby, who also did Tasha Yar. So there's a whole thing. There's quite a bit of a story going on there. Uh, then there's a story about the Cardassians, and then the Breen. They didn't really do too much with the Breen um, in Star Trek, but this here will give you a little bit more. And then there's uh, something on about the Borg specifically. And New Romulus. So, if you remember from the reboot Star Trek, um, the Romulus had exploded. And Spock had tried to stop it. And that's how he wound up being in the alternate dimension that he showed up in in the uh, the first Star Trek reboot movie. So the game continues with that. So in the Prime Universe, it's acknowledged that, yeah, Romulus was destroyed and so was Remus. So the Romulans... Um, are devastated people and they're looking for a new home so there's this uh, story that you follow in regards to helping them out and then you've got a story with Ambassador Worf uh, voiced by Michael Dorn in regards to the Dyson Spheres then there is the Delta Quadrant which features uh, various uh, cast members from Voyager, such as Tuvok and Neelix and the Doctor. So all of them uh, came back to do their voices, which is cool. And then there's the Iconian, Iconian War. And the Iko Iconians were talked about briefly in The Next Generation, but you get a lot more story here. And then there is uh, Future Proof, which is all about... Um, Time travel. This features Walter Koenig as Chekhov. He's a temporal agent. And plus, you also get uh, Agent uh, Daniels from Enterprise. Um, so, this, this, there's a lot about the temporal Cold War that goes on here in Future Proof. And it also involves the, the Nakul, which was talked about uh, in Enterprise just briefly. Then you've got New Frontiers. This features uh, the Lucari, which is a whole new race that hasn't even been in Star Trek before. So there's an interesting story that goes on here that even um, brushes back into time a little bit. 
but also uh, Jordi LaForge comes back. He's a captain. And LeVar Burton does comes back to do his voice. This also uh, touches upon uh, a new enemy called the Zinkethi. And then we have the recent expansion that came out in regards to the Gamma Quadrant. So, um, all the original voices uh, for Odo and Kira, Garrick, Nog, Quark, Rom, a lot of them have come back up, oh, and it looks like Geordi LaForge is of, uh, in this one over here, too. So, yeah, you've got all of these stories, and these are all free. You don't have to pay for these. So, you know, if anything, you can just jump into the game and just play just for the stories themselves. And you don't have to sit there and buy ships to play them. Or buy all this uh, gear and stuff. You know, you don't need that. Uh, there are PvP queues. Player versus player queues. So, that there might be um, more pay to win. But... You don't have to do player versus player if you don't want to. There's this foundry. So all of these, these are custom made missions that other players have made. So if you like to create content, here you go. All these, there's, and there's tons of it. There's lots of people that have created content and stories and stuff. Um... Then if you if you like earning uh, badges and stuff like that, there's all all this here that you can earn. So yeah, there is a ton of stuff that you can do in this game. Um, and like I said, you you can spend no money on it, or you can you can spend some money on it. I mean, there's worse things to spend money on. I mean, there are games you can spend $50, $60 on, and it's like you're done. With uh, Star Trek Online, this has got so much replay value. Because you can go back, create another character, um, do completely different ships, different customizations. I mean, I've got so many characters, it's just crazy. But, um, anyway... Uh, that's the game, and um, I I am going to be, I know I've already started uh, recording some videos uh, with Star Trek Online, um, specifically with the Deep Space Nine expansion, so check out my channel, and you'll see where those are at, but uh, yeah, I intend to be doing some more videos. Uh, with the game, because I, I love this game. You know, it's out of all the online games that I played. You know, throughout the years, this is the one that I played the most, and I've really enjoyed it. And it's, hey, uh, when it comes to you know getting your Star Trek fix, as far as new Star Trek, this is it. This game is it. Not really Star Trek Discovery. It's kind of its whole. It's a it's its own thing, but this game actually um, continues uh, from where Next Generation left off with the movies, and it ties things together. Um, it brings story elements, you know, back, and it's just it's really good. So if you have a, a computer and you don't, I don't think you really need a a heavy-duty computer, because this is this game's like eight years old. So, if you have a computer that's been made within the past eight years, it'll play this game with no problem. But uh, yeah, if you like Star Trek and you just like to have a little bit of fun and build your own 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 starships, like uh, like this here, you can load them up with and customize it with you. I can put phasers on here, disruptors, tetraon beams, polaron beams, plasma beams, you know, all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, if you, lo if you love to customize starships and take them out and test them out and stuff, 
you'll get a kick out of this game, I think. So, but um, hey, feel free to watch more of my videos just to get kind of an idea of how it's like. It looks like a complicated game, but it doesn't start off that way. You start off with a few. You kind of work. You it build. It builds up. You build. You start with something simple and you build up until you um, do everything that I'm doing here. So it's definitely not like that when you first start out. <laughs> but uh, I think we'll we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll end the video here and. Um, Appreciate you uh, tuning in and checking out the video, and hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it, and I will see you around for the next uh, ramble, rambler, rambler, mumbler, rambler, rambling video. <laughs> Until then, take care.